Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome you all for the next lecture on the inorganic chemistry of life, principles and perspectives. In the previous class, we have been looking at uh, ion binding properties, particularly towards the end we have been looking at uh, the ion binding properties with the synthetic uh, analog molecules such as crown ethers and cryptins and trying to understand the kind of parameters that influence the, uh, the uh, ion association or ion binding aspects such as the cavity size or core size as well as the number of uh, ligating centers that we have and the lipophilicity or hydrophilicity present on the peripheral uh, aspects of these particular molecules. All these affect the uh, log k s values uh, of uh, the ions bound and particularly towards the end we were trying to look at uh, some example where we can try to understand the monovalent versus the divalent uh, ion transport. So, uh, in this table I have some examples I explained to you earlier uh, in that when you have a 222 or 222 B that is one benzene ring still the selectivity is more towards the uh, divalent cation. The moment you make one more benzene ring on top of this that is 2, 2B, two 2B two then there is no specific preference either for the monovalent or divalent. So, but that does not mean that the both have been affected what is more affected was the divalent. So, divalent gets more affected when you have more hydrophobic kind of a groups. Uh, you know uh, protruding outside like phenyl group in this particular case and uh, and see that next example 2 to 2 c 8 2 2 c 8 case uh, you have a much greater st uh, you know selectivity for binding towards the monovalent cation as compared to the divalent cation this is because the divalent preference has gone extremely down from 11 uh, or 8.5 to 2 whereas, uh, the the other one has gone down like monovalent has gone down over to a to a smaller extent. So, overall the preference is for the monovalent in this. Now, if you make instead of that 2 to C 8 you make 2 to N C H 3 as like the one which is shown over there again it uh, reverses the it becomes a divalent cation. If you look at the uh, natural antibiotic uh, molecule one of the uh, things as donactin you would see there is a preference for monovalent cation by about 80 fold difference. So, all this clearly demonstrate that as you keep playing with the uh, with the uh, ion 4 molecule in terms of the pore size, in terms of the atoms that are being bound, in terms of the lipophilicity, hydrophilicity all of these aspects will change the monovalent versus the divalent uh, transport, uh, divalent uh, uh, association constants of these. Now, let us try to look at this in terms of uh, an, a couple uh, ion transport. One of the example taken over here is this is the molecule. Uh, so, in this molecule uh, which is nothing but a crowd ether which is derivatized and you have a carboxylic and the carboxylic and you know that the carboxylic group COOH proton the presence of the proton is dependent on the pH that should be kept in mind. So, here is a transport phenomena shown and this dotted region is let us say a lipid region and on one side inside the cell other is outside the cell equal to that. So, inside and outside. So, in this particular thing as you uh, have the metal ions on the on this side the metal ion will interact with the molecule at this interface and picked up by this particular molecule and replaces the proton and the replaced proton will be ejected uh, uh, out. So, that is what you can see that. So, it is ejected out. So, when it reaches the other end again it will it will release the M plus and picks up the proton. Now, it has become the uh, neutral uh, carrier and then goes uh, this way and then where it can pick up. So, you can see this is the kind of a uh, direction in which it goes the uh, molecule this particular molecule inside this. So, it picks up the metal ion and knocks out the proton and then transports to the other end 
releases the metal ion and then picks up the proton here. Similarly, instead of one uh, and monovalent, so you can have a two ions coupled with the uh, metal ion. Suppose if you take a divalent metal ion here as shown over here, when the divalent metal ion approaches here at the interface, it will kick out the two protons of this particular uh, molecule and make a uh, uh, complex with both the carboxylates. This ion is liberated or generated or released at the other end that is in the out of this particular membrane and wherein you have a, a input of the two of the protons picked up, you form a neutral one and then go back to this. So, therefore, you have a transport taking place in this particular manner. So, these are basically coupled the cation uh, coupled with the proton and here divalent cation coupled with a two protons and both are in the opposite direction. So, therefore, uh, this is where you have a antiport kind of a mechanism. So, same thing can we can understand that by looking at their log k s values uh, as a function of pH. As I mentioned, the the protonation abilities will depend on the pH values, whether the COOH is fully in the protonated form or COOH is in the COO minus form that will depend on the pH value that you have uh, here. So, as the x axis has a pH uh, variation going from left to the right increasing the pH. Now, for the same molecule as you increase the pH the K plus stability goes down see as you, you go to the on the other hand if you look at this particular curve and for the calcium 2 plus it goes up. So, initially there is very little binding for calcium and as the pH increases the binding becomes very strong and with log case and, and for K plus initially there is a high uh, association and as you increase the pH it goes down the stability goes down. So, exactly reverse that is because at the lower pH you have the molecule in the protonated form with the COOH, COOH. As you keep increasing the pH, one of the COOH loses the proton. As you increase further the pH, both the P, both the carboxylic groups will lose the proton and becomes both COO minus. So, since calcium has got a very high affinity towards the carboxylate as we have already studied in the earlier classes, the calcium bound complex becomes much more stable at this particular uh, higher p, uh, pH. So, at the lower pH potassium uh, plus can make the complex. So, when you have a COOH can still form a complex with a potassium plus when the COO minus and both the COO minus calcium plus complex is uh, very much uh, favored. So, so therefore, uh, nature tries to utilize various chemical groups which are susceptible even to the pH. Uh, and help besides the other points which I explained to you earlier, the pore size, the ligating, number of ligating atoms, the lipophilicity, hydrophilicity of the molecule as well. Now, having understood the log case very well, let us look at the next aspect, how would we compare the log case with that of the transport. Uh, in this particular slide, we have picked up two molecules, one is the 2, 2, 2, uh, cryptid, other is 2, 2, C8 cryptid. And you know here you have all 6 uh, oxygen atoms, here you have 4 oxygen atoms and one of this strand is completely common uh, chain. Now, in this if you see uh, time versus percent of transport, uh, transportation is from 0 percent of transport to 100 here. Similarly, uh, percent of transport 0 to uh, 100 percent. Now, if you look at taking the 2, 2, 2 and adding K plus, so, uh, over a period of time as you can see almost no much transport, but if you add potassium plus there is a little better transport percentage and if you add cesium plus it will be a great transport, uh, uh, you know greater transport or a very high transport uh, property. So, uh, cesium, uh, so if you look at the stabilities which are given in the brackets here, uh, the potassium plus log case is greatest as compared to the sodium plus as compared to the cesium plus that is what is shown over there. The stability is or the log case is K plus is greater than sodium plus is much 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 greater than the cesium plus. But on the other hand transport is cesium plus is much much greater than sodium plus which is greater than uh, potassium plus. So, what do you conclude here? You conclude that the stability and the transport are not are in the inversely related in this particular example. Now, come to the right side example 2 to C 8. So, you would find the 
uh, transport stability is K plus is greater than sodium plus is greater than cesium plus you can say 5.2, 3.5, 2.7. On the other hand transport if you look at the transport part the K plus is greater than the Na plus which is greater than cesium plus. So, what would be your conclusion? Both the stability order and transport order uh, are, are uh, directly proportional. Whereas, here the stability versus the transport are indirectly proportional. So, what does this mean? So, if you take one molecule you are getting inversely proportional, if you take the other molecule you are getting uh, directly proportional. So, this is a kind of a controversy which is definitely is not a controversy. If you look at carefully and try to compare whenever you have a k plus values in the range of 4 and a half to 6 range then you get the uh, maximum kind of a transport all other times even if you have a greater stability transport will be lower than that and that is what we are trying to find. So, therefore, the stability order and the transport order have no correlation neither the uh, direct relation nor the, uh, the inverse relation at all. It is this value of the log k s which is determining. So, log k s in the range of 4.5 to 6 is the maximum transport that it uh, uh, shows. Now, let us try to compare with some natural uh, uh, ionophores. If you look at the natural ionophores, the monensin uh, which is for the sodium which shows 5.8. And if you look at the valinomycin, it will show uh, for the calcium 2 plus is the 2 point uh, sorry uh, uh, the potassium 2 plus potassium plus I am sorry potassium plus the 4.9. So, somewhere around 5 uh, in the vicinity of the 5 you have the, uh, the greater the affinity of these ones. So, the natural valinomycin which is specific for calcium potassium plus has got around 5 log k s value and for the monids in uh, the sodium plus is got 5.8. So, in the range of 5 plus or minus 1 seem to be the optimal value uh, for the natural ionophore and the same thing that we had tried to look for the, uh, the other ionophore which is the synthetic ionophore. So, therefore, in effect what we would like to say is that for the natural ionophore or the synthetic ionophore the main thing that is uh, basically uh, reflecting is the log k s value. If the log k s value is the range of 4.5 to 6 range that is the most uh, preferred one. So, what this means is the lower the stability constant, the greater the stability constant with respect to 4.5 to 6 both are detrimental because when it is lower it will make the complex, but the complex transport uh, during the transport itself it will break. When you have a very high log k s beyond 6 what will happen it will form a very strong complex it will take across the membrane, but it will never release. So, in one case the breakdown of the complex is before the release point in the other case even when it reaches the other side of the membrane it will still not release the thing. So, this is the kind of a uh, situation that we find and that is where the log k s value 5 plus or minus 1 is the helpful indicator for all this. So, let us look at one uh, another aspect uh, as I mentioned in initially the magnesium uh, forms uh, a complex with the ATP in all these enzymes uh, to convert for the hydrolysis of ATP or even for synthesis of ATP from ADP in both the cases uh, the magnesium 2 plus uh, binds to this. So, when the magnesium 2 plus binds to ATP you can see here one of the I, uh, isomer is in this way other isomer there are two possible isomers are there and uh, so these are the, the ones which provides the stability to this particular uh, system this is how it uh, basically explains the, uh, the whole thing of the stability of the uh, of the AMP or ATP with respect to the magnesium 2 plus in the process of phosphorylation as well in the process of the dephosphorylation where it has to add a phosphate group where it has to add remove a phosphate group. And uh, the other side I have explained some things the magnesium 2 plus ions in fact stabilize the tRNA structure. How does it stabilize? Magnesium 2 plus ions do not directly bind to the uh, tRNA. 
So, what basically binds is magnesium aqua complex MgOH26 uh, 2 plus and this particular complex is the one which binds to the tRNA. So, that means it is the water which is bound to the magnesium and in turn interacts with the tRNA. So, that means it is basically a secondary sphere interactions of the magnesium. So, the magnesium first uh, sphere is the water and the water molecule in turn interacts with this uh, uh, with this tRNA. So, therefore, these are called the secondary sphere kind of interactions because there is no direct interaction between the uh, tRNA and the magnesium center, but the interactions between the tRNA and the water molecule and most of these are by the hydrogen body. So, magnesium uh, hexa aqua is the ion which stabilizes the structure of the tRNA through uh, the formation of the hydrogen bonds as you can uh, see the example over here. So, therefore, in this uh, particular lecture what I have talked to you is about the uh, monovalent versus the divalent uh, uh, balancing or selectivity in terms of the log k s value that I have explained and first of all the log k s values themselves are dependent on the core size or the pore size and the uh, ligating centers number of ligating atoms present in that and uh, as well as the lipophilicity, hydrophilicity of the molecule. Then we talked about the coupled transport, the ion versus proton, ion versus proton in the reverse direction which is antiport mechanism. So, we I explained to you through an example of dicarboxylic group containing crown ether. So, for monovalent, for divalent, for monovalent let us say potassium plus, for divalent it is for the uh, calcium 2 plus and we have seen that the divalent calcium 2 plus has got a very high stability constant and a higher pH uh, whereas, it is exactly reverse the for the potassium plus because at the low pH the carboxylic groups are COOH form at a higher pH carboxylic groups are in COO minus form and both the COO minus will be strongly binding to the calcium whereas, the both the COOH positive uh, COOH groups will be binding to the potassium plus. So, this difference also we have looked at. Then we have looked at the, uh, the stability versus the transport ability. So, I have shown in one case the stability and transport ability are uh, directly proportional. In another case uh, stability versus the transport are, uh, are indirectly proportional. So, that means it is there is a uh, controversy thing which is not really the uh, aspect. The aspect you need to look at is look at the log case. So, wherever the log case is the range of 4.5 to 6 that is the one which is favored and this is comparable with the uh, with the with the natural ionophores and that is what I have shown in the end. Thank you very much.